Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome. Today's topic is the 1923 Cleveland Indians ALMLB baseball season. Again, the tribe was playing in the American League, the junior circuit of Major League Baseball. And home games in Cleveland were being played at League Park, which at the time was known as Dunn Field, in honor of Jim Dunn, who actually had passed away the year before. Uh, the Tribe had a strong year in 1923. They finished in third place with a record of 82-71, and 71, winning percentage of 536, 16 and a half games out of first. The first place team was the New York Yankees, who were 98-54, and 54, winning percentage of 645. Second place, the Detroit Tigers, 83-71. and 71. Third place, the Cleveland Indians, 82-71. and 71. Fourth place, the Washington Senators, 75 and 78. Fifth place, the St. Louis Browns, 74 and 78. Sixth place, the Philadelphia Athletics, 69 and 83. Seventh place, the Chicago White Sox, 69 and 85. And in eighth and last place, the Boston Red Sox were 61 and 91, winning percentage of 401 and 37 games out of first. Now, in 1923, the Indians tried to They had longer caps, or I mean caps with longer bills, you know, which would they hoped would help on sunny days keep the sun out of the players' eyes. The tribe led the league in batting average and runs scored in 1923. On in a July game at League Park, they won a game against Boston 27 to 3, and that was a record for runs scored in a game which was held until 1950. They won a game against the Yankees and in which Carl Mays, the guy who had thrown, thrown the ball in 1920 that had killed Ray Chapman, he had a complete game loss and gave up 20 hits. On July 22nd, Walter Johnson of the Washington Senators became the, the all-time strikeout king. And he got his, uh, or he was the all-time strikeout king, and he, had, he got his 3,000th strikeout against Cleveland. He ended up with a total of 3,508, which was the record, which was only only broken until uh, uh, finally in 1983 by Nolan Ryan. Uh, Johnson, Walter Johnson, actually became the Cleveland manager in 1933. Now, the attendance for 1923 was 558,586 at League Park, or an average of 7,305 fans per game. Uh, now, the coaching staff, we had uh, two coaches. Jack McAllister was back as tribe coach, and he was with Cleveland from 1913 to 1927, and he, he worked as a, as a coach, a scout, and, and then at the end as manager, Jack McAllister. We had our second coach, a second coach was added in 1923. Frank Roth was from Chicago, Illinois. He died in Burlington, Wisconsin. In 1955, at age 76, in his playing career, he hit 250 with one home run and 75 RBIs. Roth played for the Philadelphia Phillies, St. Louis Browns, Chicago White Sox, and Cincinnati Reds between 1903 and 1910. He was a coach for the New York Yankees, the Chicago White Sox, and Cleveland Indians. In the minor leagues, he played for the Sioux City Cornhuskers, the Cedar Rapids Rabbits, the Evansville River Rats, the Battle Creek Cerro Frutos, and the St. Joseph Saints. And he was a tribe coach between 1923 and 1925, Frank Roth. Now, the tribe player manager in 1923 was, again, the superstar center fielder, Tris Speaker, who batted 380. He had 59 doubles, 11 triples, 17 home runs. 130 RBIs, 8 stolen bases in 150 games. And Speaker was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1926. He was third in hitting in the American League, behind, uh, behind Harry Heilman of Detroit, who batted 403, and Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees, who hit 393. Uh, so he let, now Tris Speaker led the league in doubles and set, a, and that was a record. His uh, 59 doubles was a record for the, at the time. And he also tied Babe Ruth with the league league in RBIs, Tris Speaker. Steve O'Neill was our catcher again in 1923. He was, he, O'Neill batted 248 with 12 doubles, 50 RBIs, 31 runs scored in 113 games. 
Steve O'Neill was with Cleveland from 1911 to 1923, so this was the end of his playing career for the Indians. However, he continued in the major leagues until 1928 and then returned and became the tribe manager between 1935 and 1937. Steve O'Neill. Frank Brower was our first baseman. Brower batted 285 with 25 doubles, 8 triples, 16 home runs, 66 RBIs, 6 stolen bases, and 126 games. Brower was from Catharpin, Virginia. He died in Baltimore, Maryland in 1960 at age 71. Career average of 286 with 30 home runs and 205 RBIs. Brower played for the Washington Senators and Cleveland Indians between 1920 and 1924. And they called him Turkey Foot, Frank Brower. Bill Wams Gantz, again, was our second baseman. Wams Gantz batted 290 with 20 doubles, 4 triples, a home run, 59 RBIs, 10 stolen bases in 101 games. Wams Gantz was with Cleveland from 1914 to 1923, so this was the end of his time in Cleveland. He continued in the major leagues until 1926. He also was a manager in the minor leagues and also a manager in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. He managed the Fort Wayne Daisies from 1945 to 1946 and the Muskegon Lassies from 1947 to 1948. And of course, uh, the All-American Girls Professional League is depicted in in the fine movie A League of Their Own. Bill Wamsgantz. Joe Sewell was our tremendous shortstop in 1923. He batted 353, 41 doubles, 10 triples, 3 home runs, 109 RBIs, 9 stolen bases in 153 games. And Sewell was with Cleveland from 1920 to 1930. Joe Sewell. Rube Lutsky was our third baseman. He batted 256 with 20 doubles, 6 triples, 3 home runs, 65 RBIs, 9 stolen bases in 143 games. Lutsky was from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He died in 1938 at age 40. He played for the Cleveland Indians from 1923 to 1927. And uh, for his career, he hit 249 with 468 hits, 87 doubles, 18 triples, 4 home runs, 222 RBIs, 23 stolen bases in 572 games. In 1920, with Montreal in the minor leagues, he made a bet that he could slide down a rope from the fifth floor of a hotel to the ground. He won the bet but burnt his hands and was temporarily unable to play. Now, one game with Cleveland, he was taken out for a pinch hitter by Tris Speaker, and he threw his bat at the manager, Speaker. And and Speaker responded, quote, That'll cost you $25. If you could hit with that bat as well as you can throw it, you'd be much better. Now, in the clubhouse after that game, Lutsky was a complaint, quote, If that dumb manager could figure percentages, he would know I was due for a hit. I was up three times without any luck, so the percentages, so the percentage was with me. Now, a speaker overheard that comment, which he thought was pretty funny, and so he decided to rescind the fine. Rube Lutsky, funny guy. In the outfield, we had Charlie Jameson, who had an incredible year. Jameson batted 345, 36 doubles, 12 triples, two home runs. 51 RBIs, 18 stolen bases in 152 games, and Jamison was with Cleveland from 1919 to 1932. Charlie Jamison. Homer Suma was the right fielder. Suma batted 328 with 27 doubles, 6 triples, 3 home runs, 69 RBIs, 9 stolen bases in 137 games. And Suma was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1928. Homer Suma. Now, the bench players included Riggs Stevenson, who played some second base. Stevenson could hit, although he struggled defensively. He hit 319 with 20 doubles, 6 triples, 5 home runs, 65 RBIs, 5 stolen bases in 91 games. And Stevenson was with Cleveland from 1921 to 1925. Riggs Stevenson. Glenn Myatt was a spare catcher. Myatt batted 286 with seven doubles, six triples, three home runs, 40 RBIs um, in, in 92 games, 36 uh, runs scored. Myatt was from Argenta, Ar- Arkansas. He died in Houston, Texas in 1969 at age 72. For his career, Myatt batted 270 with 38 home runs and 387 RBIs. Myatt played for the Philadelphia Athletics, Cleveland Indians, New York Giants, and Detroit Tigers. 
between 1920 and 1936, Glenn Myatt. Lou Gusto played some first base. Gusto batted 181 with 26 hits and 144 at-bats, 5 doubles, 18 RBIs, a stolen base in 40 games. Gusto was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1917 and then 1921 to 1923. This was the end of his MLB career. However, he, can, he managed in the minor leagues from 1929 to 1931. Lou Gusto. Joe Connolly played some outfield. Connolly batted 303 with 33 hits and 109 at-bats, 10 doubles, a triple, 3 home runs, 25 RBIs, a stolen base in 52 games, and Connolly was with Cleveland in 1922 and 1923, and he continued in the major leagues until 1924. Joe Connolly. Larry Gardner played some third base. Gardner batted 253 with 20 hits and 79 at-bats, five doubles, a triple, 12 RBIs in 52 games. Gardner was with Cleveland from 1919 to 1924. Larry Gardner. Ray Node played some first base. He batted 289 with 11 hits in 38 at bats, he scored seven runs. He had two home runs, four RBIs, a stolen base in 22 games. Node was from Westminster, Maryland. He died in Battle Creek, Michigan in 1982 at age 81. For his career, he hit 266 with 55 hits, two home runs, and 32 RBIs. Node played for the Cleveland Indians from 1923 to 1926. He went to the University of Maryland and was the foot was on the football team and played quarterback from 1916 to 1919. Then he went to the University of Michigan and was their football quarterback from 1921 to 1922. His brother had, did the same thing. He was an MLB player with St. Louis, and he also uh, his brother Kenneth played for the Cardinals, and he was also uh, the quarterback for Maryland and Michigan. Now, in the minor leagues, Ray Node played for the Waynesboro Villagers. Ray Node. Luke Sewell was a spare catcher. Sewell batted 200 with two hits and 10 at-bats. He scored two runs, had a triple and RBI in 10 games. Sewell was with Cleveland from 1921 to 1932. The brother of Joe Sewell, Luke Sewell. Wayne Shaner was a utility player. Shaner batted 250, one hit and four at-bats. He scored a run in three games. Shaner was from Lynchburg, Virginia. He died in Los Las Vegas, Nevada, in 1992 at age 92. For his career, he hit 278 with four home runs and 74 RBIs. Shaner played for the Cleveland Indians, Boston Red Sox, and Cincinnati Reds between 1923 and 1929. He went to Virginia, he went to the Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University and played on the Hokies baseball team. He's a professional baseball player from 1920 to 1932. 1925 with the Lincoln Lynx in the minor leagues. He was fourth in the batting race and hit 358. He had 30 triples, which is second in minor league history and fifth in pro baseball history. He was also a stage manager after he retired from baseball at the Stardust Hotel in Las Vegas. And he was a he served in the Second World War in the military. Wally Shaner. Tom Gully was an outfielder. Gully batted 333 with one hit and three at bats. He scored a run, had a double in two games. Gully was born in 1899. He died in 1966 at age 66. He went to Mississippi College. He played for the Cleveland Indians and Chicago White Sox between 1923 and 1926. He was the sheriff at the Pulaski County, uh, in Pulaski County, Arkansas, during the events of the Little Rock Nine. He was born in Garner, North Carolina, and died of a drowning accident in St. Charles, Arkansas. For his career, Tom Gully hit 207 with 12 hits and 58 at bats, four doubles, two triples, nine RBIs in 26 games. Tom Gully. Sumter Clark played some outfield. Clark batted three times, did not have a hit in one game. Clark was from Savannah, Georgia. He died in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1962 at age 64. For his career, he bit batted 227 with 11 RBIs. Clark played for the Chicago Cubs and Cleveland Indians between 1920 and 1924. In the minor leagues, he played for the Baltimore Orioles, Birmingham Barons, the New Orleans Pelicans, Atlanta Crackers, Albany Nuts, and Springfield Chicks. Sumter Clark. Jackie Gallagher played some outfield. Or outfield. He batted 1,000, batted once, and had a hit in one game. Gallagher was from Providence, Rhode Island. He died in Gladwine, Pennsylvania in 1984 at age 82. 
His MLB career was just with the Cleveland Indians in 1923, and his, his lifetime batting average is 1,000. Jackie Gallagher. Kenny Hogan played some outfield. Hogan batted once, did not have a hit. He was born in 1902 and died in Cleveland, Ohio in 1980 at age 77. Hogan played for the Cincinnati Reds and Cleveland Indians between 1921 and 1924. For his career, he batted three times, did not have a hit, struck out once in four games. In the minor leagues, he played for the Akron Tyrites, the Canton Terriers, and the Erie Sailors. Kenny Hogan. Now, the pitching staff, our ace pitcher in 1923 was George Ewell, who was also a tremendous hitter. He batted 361. Wow. 52 hits and 144 at-bats, 10 doubles, 3 triples, 22, home, 22 RBIs, 2 stolen bases in 58 games. And Ewell's pitching record was 26-16, and 16, an ERA of 3.77, 54 games, 44 starts, 30 complete games, a shutout, and 5 saves. Ewell pitched for, with Cleveland from 1919 to 1928 and then back in 1936. He's buried at Lakewood Cemetery in Rocky River, Ohio. And in 1926, Ewell led the American League in victories with 26. He also led the league in complete games and innings pitched. He threw 357 and two-thirds innings, innings in 1923. George Ewell. Stan Kovaleski was second in the rotation. Kovaleski batted 089, seven hits and 79 at-bats. He scored nine runs at six RBIs. He walked once, struck out 25 times in 33 games. Kowaleski's pitching record was 13 and 14, an ERA of 2.76, 33 games, 31 starts, 16 complete games, five shutouts, and two saves. And Kowaleski was with Cleveland from 1916 to 1924. Stan Kowaleski. Joe Schout was uh, third in the rotation. Schout batted 162, 11 hits and 68 at bats. He scored three runs, four RBIs in 33 games. Schout's rec- pitching record was 10 and 8. With an ERA of 4.24, 33 games, 14 starts, 3 complete games, 2 shutouts, and a save. And Schott was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1930. Joe Schott. Jim Joe Edwards was another pitcher. Edwards batted 119 with 7 hits and 59 at-bats. He scored 4 runs, 2 RBIs, 12 strikeouts, and 38 games. Edwards' pitching record was 11-10 with an ERA of 3.71. 38 games, 21 starts, 7 complete games, a shutout, and a save. And Edwards was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1925. Jim Joe Edwards. Sherry Smith was another pitcher. Smith batted 244, 11 hits and 45 at bats, scored 5 runs, and had a home run, 4 RBIs, stole a base, walked 3 times, struck out 11 times in 30 games. Smith's pitching record was 9 and 6, with an ERA of 3.27. 30 games, 16 starts, 10 complete games, a shutout, and a save. And Smith was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1927. Sherry Smith. Guy Morton was another pitcher. Morton batted 159 with 7 hits and 44 at-bats. Scored 4 runs, had a double, 2 RBIs, and 33 games. Morton's pitching record was 6-6 six six with an ERA of 4.24. 33 games, 14 starts, 3 complete games, 2 shutouts, and a save. And Morton was with Cleveland from 1914 to 1924. Guy Morton. Dewey Mativier was another pitcher. Mativier batted 150. Three hits and 20 at-bats. Scored three runs. Had an RBI. Walked three times. Struck out five times in 26 games. His pitching record was 4-2 with an ERA of 6.50. 26 games, five starts, a complete game, and a save. And Mativier was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1924. Dewey Mativier. Dan Boone was another pitcher. Boone batted 211, four hits and 19 at bats, scored three runs, had a double, an RBI in 27 games. Boone's pitching record was 4 and 6, with an ERA of 6.01. 27 games, four starts, two complete games, and 70 and, a th- and one third innings pitched. So he was primarily, primarily a relief pitcher. Boone was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1923, and this was the end of his MLB career. Dan Boone. Phil Bedgood was another pitcher. Bedgood batted 250, one hit and four at bats, a double in nine games. His pitching record was 0 2 with an ERA of 5.30. Nine games, two starts, and 18 and two thirds innings pitched. Bedgood was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1923, and this was the end of his MLB career. Phil Bedgood. 
Johnson Fry, also known as Jay, uh, was in a was a also a, a, a pitcher. He batted a thousand, batted once uh, and had a hit in one game. He, as a pitcher, he had no decisions and an ERA of twelve point two seven. One game and three and two thirds innings pitched. He was born in nineteen oh one in Huntington, West Virginia, and died in nineteen fifty nine at age fifty eight. Played for the Cleveland Indians in 1923, so this was the extent of his MLB career. And he also had a lifetime batting average of 1,000. Johnson Fry. Jim Sullivan was another pitcher. Sullivan batted once, did not have a hit. In three games, he struck out once. Pitching record was 0-1, with an ERA of 14.40. Three games and five innings pitched. Sullivan was from Mine Run, Virginia. He died in Burtonsville, Maryland in 1972 at age 77. His career record was 0-5 with an ERA of 5.52 and 27 strikeouts. Sullivan played for the Philadelphia Athletics and Cleveland Indians between 1921 and 1923. Jim Sullivan. George Edmondson was another pitcher. Edmondson batted once, did not have a hit in one game. As a pitcher, he had no decisions and an ERA of 11.25, one game and four innings pitched. And Edmondson was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1924. George Edmondson. Dutch Levson was another pitcher. Levson uh, batted once, did not have a hit in three games. He had no decisions as a pitcher and an ERA of 0.00. Three games, four and a third innings pitched, and zero earned runs. Levson was from Wyoming, Iowa. He died in St. Louis Park, Minnesota in 1972 at age 73. For his career, he was 21 and 26 with an ERA of 4.17 and 88 strikeouts. Levson pitched for the Cleveland Indians from 1923 to 1928. On August 28, 1926, Levson became the last pitcher to win both games of a doubleheader. He pitched two two nine-inning games and won the first six to one and the second five to one. He was also the last pitcher to throw two nine-inning games in one day. He, went, he played for the Iowa State Cyclones. Dutch Levson. Logan Drake was another pitcher. Drake uh, uh, played in four games, did not, have, did not bat. His, he had no decisions as a pitcher, an ERA of 4.15, four games and four and a third innings pitched. And Drake was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1924. Logan Drake. George Wynn was an, uh, and finally George Wynn was another, another pitcher. He, Got in one game, did not bat, had no decisions as a pitcher, an ERA of 0.00. One game, two innings pitched, and zero earned runs allowed. Wynn was with Cleveland from 1922 to 1923, and this was the end of his MLB career. Now, after the regular season, the New York Giants, the National League champions, were defeated by the New York Yankees, the American League champions, four games to two. So, this for, so for the third time in a row, it was the Yankees-Giants in the World Series. Now, 1923 was the first year of Yankee Stadium. Uh, the Giants had uh, the famous manager John McGraw and star players Frankie Frisch and Hack Wilson. The Yankees' manager was Miller Huggins. They had Lou, the star players Lou Gehrig, Wait Hoyt, Herb Pinock, and Babe Ruth. So that's the story of the 1923 Cleveland Indians. They had a, had a good year. God bless all the fellows who played for the Indians in 1923 and everyone else associated with the team, including the fans, especially the Civil War veterans, Spanish-American War veterans, and First World War veterans. Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, Terminal Tower Power, fans of the Free Stamp Statue and the Fountain of Eternal Life, Severance Hall Stalwarts, Euclid, Euclid Avenue... Euclid Avenue Electricity, First Energy Stadium Friends, Progressive Field Pals, Quicken Loans Arena Enthusiasts, <clears throat> Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters and Gladiators, Gladiators Rule, Cleveland, City of Champions. Cleveland is the best location in the nation on the north coast of America. New York is the Big Apple. Cleveland is a plum. Before you know it, it'll be opening day 2019. Go Tribe. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.